Hi there, it's Annalise again from Everything Art. Today we're going to be playing with jelly plates again. Uh, we've got three quite fun techniques for you to try, a little bit more advanced than the last ones we did, but I'm sure you'll get the hang of these. Go and play along. So the first one we're going to do is a really nice simple technique and as you can see I've already covered my gel plate with just a plain black acrylic paint. Not too thick a coat, not too thin, it's just a, just a proper nice coat of paint and it needs to be completely dry. And what we're going to do is going to use tools describing it. Now, if you haven't got these tools, you could use the end of a paintbrush. Um, I've got a little wooden skewer here. You can use all kinds of things just to mark. Nothing sharp, though, because we don't want to damage the gel plate. So that's the really important bit, anything that's smooth and rounded. So we're going to go in and we're just going to create lines, and circles and all kinds of things just using this tool. It's why it needs to be dry, because if it's not, you're just going to end up becoming a smudgy mess. So I'm going to just do something quite simple. You can just you can use the tools in sort of all different ways. You really just need to try out this and see what marks you can make. Let's just put a few more of these dots here, make a bit more of a I don't know what plant is that that has all the dots? Like is it cow parsley or something? Or alliums? Don't know. But something like that. Let's do that. And then if you want a little bit more flow, because obviously it drags a little bit, is to just grab a little bit of water and you can sort of be a little bit more painterly with it. We can just take off the excess. You do need to clean off your tool every so often because the paint does collect on it. I'm just going to do that. We're just going to do another few bits of design on here. Like this. And just a few more bits of grass. So you can get as complicated or as simple as you like doing this. Something else I'm going to do to just add to this is using a stencil. And I'm just going to pop that on the top. And then simply using a baby wipe, go in and create some spaces. So when I take that off, you can see, turn that around to you, um, a very simple design. Now we just need to let this dry a little bit. And to be fair, you could actually use a piece of kitchen towel. As long as you don't smudge it, it's just to blot it because it'll speed up the process. Let's see while we're filming. Just to take off any wetness that was on the baby wipe because we want it to be nice and dry. Because of course the next thing we've got to do is put on a wet layer so that we can pull the print. So I'm just going to use um, some acrylic paint. This is in Titan Buff Light. And we're just going to pop some on here and just use the brayer to roll it over. Now I found with this technique, sometimes the first pull is really quite pale. And actually, it's the second pull that really gives you a nice pull. Let me just take off my excess. But as you know, gel plates, things tend to work differently every time you do it. So let's see. So I'm going to use the extra strength tissue paper. And I don't know if you remember last time we used it, we suggested using the rough side rather than the smooth side because it's more absorbent. So we're just popping that onto there. And giving it a good press down. So we'll take this one off. Yep, I think that first layer is going to work nicely. And so you can create a cool image like that. So, on this technique, we're going to use alcohol inks. People often ask what other products other than acrylic paints they can use on gel plate. Alcohol inks is one of them and it creates a really pretty effect. So I've seen them being used um, by someone else where they're pouring it straight onto the mat um, or through a stencil, but there's not much control over that. And so it can bleed under the stencil. So I'm opting to use the tool. So these are Ranger alcohol inks. I think there are other brands out there, but these are just ones I have and I really like. Um, I've got a really, sort of, I've got a nice bright palette of colors here. Um, and I'm going to use a stencil. I'm going to use this circular one again. And what we're going to do is use one of the applicator tools and we are just going to 
few dabs on there and then very randomly we're just going to add the colour don't think about it don't try and cover every hole at this point just with just a random selection of colour I'm going to go in with stream I'm going to use the same pad for this one because they're similar colours family put that on there And then because I'm going to go for some reds, I'm just going to swap out my felt. We've got the red pepper on this one. Don't be afraid to overlap the colours because then they'll make more of their own colour. They just, they just work together. They're beautiful. Just let's play. <laughs> let's explanation. There. More dabbing. There we go. I'm going to just grab another felt. All these felts are reusable. If you're using the same colour families, you can just reuse them as and when. Um, for the video, I'm making it easy by keeping them clean. So yellow. And so you can see, I'm really not trying hard to fill in all the circles. I'm obviously looking for gaps, but I'm not worrying too much about it. Just putting that colour down. I think we shall have, I think maybe some orange. Because we've just used yellow again, similar colour family, so I'm just going to put the orange on top. Now that we've got that much colour on, we are going to be a little bit more careful about where we're going to put, because you can see now there are a few little gaps, not many, but there are a few. Um, and now is the time to fill in the spaces. So I think... Which shall I use? I think a blue. Let's go with a light blue. So I've got sail bloat, how can I say it? Sail boat blue, not bloat blue. And we're just going to pop these in. So now I'm looking for those spaces where the ink's not yet or where it's a bit patchy. Obviously, you don't have to do the entire stencil. You can miss bits out. You can just do it as, however you like. But that will probably do it that. So move those aside a moment. And we're just going to peel up the stencil. Reminds me of sweets like jelly tops and that kind of thing. Okay, so I need this to dry. Now, alcohol ink doesn't take very long to dry um, because it's very nature. So just leave it for a moment or two. And then I can literally just go in and touch. And you can see there's nothing coming off of my hands. So that's good to go. So it is a nice, quick, easy technique, this. And some paint on there. And I'm just going to get a brayer, that will do. Now I did find with this technique, I think it depends how much paint you put on. If there's too much paint on the first layer, you, you will get two pulls out of it and the second one tends to be better. But the muted first one actually is quite pretty too, so let's just see what happens. Grab a piece of tissue, remember, rough side down. Not quite big enough, my piece of gel plate, but oh, I've smudged it, never mind, keep going. <laughs> That's it. So you can see there's one layer. That's the first pull. And then we're just going to go in again. that okay so on this last technique we're going to use posca pens i'm often asked can you use posca pens on the gel plate because obviously they're an acrylic paint in a pen and the answer is yes of course you can so we're going to use posca pens we're also going to apply paint with brushes rather than with a brayer to give it a bit of a freer more painterly finish to give you something a bit different to what we normally produce so we're just going to get started and we're going to start by using the posca pens to create a bit of a design on the gel plate now the nice thing with Posca pens is you can add quite a lot of texture um, by just kind of scribbling with them, things like this, but they can overlay them. So I just quickly whiz over here. You can obviously this is not going to have a great deal of thought. Now I'm just going to um, put stuff in, but you can see how you can overlay and create depth to your scribbles in any shape or form you want. Um, 
and just create some shapes and I can just create marks. So really it's, it's just having a play and enjoying that kind of free process. Um, just go for some bigger circles. I say circles, it's a very loose term, more like eggs, lumpy eggs at that. And we can try using a different colour. Let's add a bit of the red in. And another thing, of course, we can do with this, like we did on the other one, is use a tool again. And we can actually go in and take paint off. So to create another level of texture. So obviously you can spend as long as you like on this. I don't want to spend too long on it because you'll all get really bored. But I just want to show you the kind of things you can do so you can get really involved in it and take your time and enjoy this whole process because it is actually really therapeutic, this. Um, so you see there, there's quite a lot going on, but done really simply and really easily. Now, we normally, we just need to let the Posca pen dry um, before we start the next layer. Um, and while that's drying, you can, I mean, you can have, you can, you could cover the whole thing with pens. You could do as much as you like or as little as you like. Um, but because of the time constraints for the video, obviously I don't want to make you wait all day. Because of that, I'm also just going to use the kitchen towel and just, there's only a few little bits that are just wet. So I'm just going to take off that so we can just crack on a little bit quicker. But that's about it. That's it. That's all dry. All good to go. So. I'm going to go in um, just with some acrylic paint. So, oh, scratch my brush around. So, whereas normally we add with the brayer, we can get more texture when we go in like this with a brush. Like I say it's a bit more of a kind of relaxing, therapeutic kind of process because you could play on this for as long as you wanted with as many layers as you wanted. You're not kind of limited. I'm obviously doing this very quickly, just throwing the stuff on. So I'm not going to promise a great result with this one. It's giving you hopefully the idea of what you could do yourselves. And there. Oops. Now, obviously, the thicker you put paint on this, the longer it's going to take to dry. So do bear that in mind as you're adding your layers of texture. I'll just add a bit of this. Because this one, India yellow hue, just to brighten it up. So once you're happy with whatever colour paints you've put down, if you want to, you can go in and use your stencils and take some colour off. I'm just going to use that same stencil we've been using today. And I'm not going to take it all off, but I'm going to allow it to sit. And I'm just going to take the baby wipe again and just, just a few little patches here and there and lift off. Now, I'm going to have to let this dry because it needs to be completely dry and then we're going to come back to it. Okay, so we've allowed this to dry. Now, it confuses people whether things should be wet when you're doing gel plates or dry, you're told to leave things to dry, but if you try and pull that, it won't work. The really key thing with gel plates is that when you are ready to pull, the last layer has to be wet. If it's not, it won't work. So whatever your final layer is, that is wet when you pull the print, and that's how it actually works. It's the wet layer that activates the dry layer beneath it and pulls it off as you work. So, to, ex to, to show you that, I've got this all now um, dried out. So we're just going to chuck on the last layer. 
and we don't want it to be too thick we don't want it to be too thin you just need a nice even coverage is ideal and like i said with the other two techniques sometimes it takes more than one pull to get the all the colors off when there's a lot going on okay so i'm going to use let's use a piece of sketching paper this time something a little bit different so just a thin layer of sketching paper and we're just going to pop that on and we there's a lot on this that's dried including the posca pen so we really need to give this a proper rub onto that to adhere it You actually feel the gel plate start to warm up under your hand, which is a good sign that it's starting to take. So we can start pulling and see what happens. Yeah, that's coming up. You can see it's quite clean straight away. And there you have it. More painterly pull. Thanks for watching. It's been real good fun to show these techniques and share them with you. I hope you have a play. Let us see the results. See you soon. Take care.